Hello there, this is Professor York, and this is the first of a three-part series on tips for great presentations. Our focus here will be on strategy. The bottom line is we want to be able to, through this module, make sure that you have a good framework for making a great presentation. But first, you've got to keep in mind that when we look at presentations, <laughs> believe it or not, it's something that people fear more than death itself. Hopefully, through these three uh, video modules, you'll develop um, a framework, as well as some tips around your slides, as well as presenting and closing. Sometimes you feel like you're missing your point. I heard this out of uh, several presentations uh, a few weeks ago when several of our advisors asked, well, make your point up front. So this is very, very critical. Why is that so? Because sometimes you, know, you miss the exact attention of your executives, okay? They're bored in the first two minutes. Or if you are pitching to uh, venture capitalists, and I've seen this where literally individuals have done pitches and they've had the videotape and literally at two minutes, the laptop comes up, you see the nodding back, etc. So you wanna make sure that you are able to grab and make your point. Sometimes executives get called into for emergency, and if you left your bottom line to the end, then you didn't have, you miss the opportunity to drive home your major point in your presentation to your target audience. So what makes for great presentations? We're going to have three areas of focus, okay? And what the first area that we're going to talk about is going to be what we call setup. Okay, the second area will be pyramid and the third will be headlines and stories. So let's move into setup. So what makes for a great setup? Great setup is usually with a hook. You've got to wake up your audience. You have to engage your audience. And how do you do it? As you saw, I had a few gifts that are there, but it could be a story, a misdirect, a joke. It could be a rhetorical question. Sometimes I'll start a, a, a presentation with a question to engage an audience, to set the stage. Sometimes it's a metaphor. I've had students that have done a little skit up front. Sometimes they'll have a little video. Remember the video that I showed relative to the, um, the, the rocket going up and it was sponsored by Adobe and how they were making changes? That was a hook for a team that was doing a presentation on social media. Uh, sometimes you want to have a shock or provocative statement uh, that is there. So that's the bottom line is you, you want to engage that audience up front and you want to be able to bring them along on the ride. And if you don't do that, then your audience is going to be like that tiger sort of getting yawny. And according to Ted, believe it or not, if you look at Ted Talks, that stories are a great way of opening up a presentation. So a personal story that can really um illustrate the point that you want to get is is probably one of the top ways and you know that is there but you know it could be a video graphic it could be a belief statement a structure humor and i only caution about humor only if you are naturally humorous because it can backfire rhetorical question provocative statement and a shock and surprise so this sort of gives you a sense of that but have something at the end of the day that helps to engage that audience. So in this case, here's something that I used out of a, a pitch presentation for an ophthalmic drug, and I put a question up front. And I remember that the, the teacher, who is a venture capitalist, said, I, you had me, where? At slide two. This was slide two, because I basically gave the choice to the audience. Which would you prefer in terms of managing this disease called age-related macular degeneration? And so that set the stage to be able to get into really uh, the problem, the market, and the solution, the target audience that's there, and then our value proposition for the company and our path whole. So here's another example. Uh, this I used in SEO. I wanted everyone to bra brace in for a very, very invigorating, and it was a long presentation. It was about 75 minutes because there was a lot to cover in SEO. But I said, we're going to rock through this. And I said, get strapped in for a fast and furious review. Here's another one that we did up at Berkeley to talk about 
uh, a, a, a case involving CVS Pharmacy, and we use Simon Sinek's why, how, and what to sort of uh, tee up the issues. A, another good way, and I like this, and this is something that um, we have learned from the folks over at McKinsey using the Minto technique. And a good story requires the understanding of four key elements. We call it SCQR, situation, complication, uh, question, or recommendation or resolution. So this is going to be very critical in your presentations. I will be looking for these elements because once you set your hook, then you want to set the stage and then be able to raise the question and lay out the structure. And I'll talk a little more about structure. So here's an example of one of the teams that we had in our consulting classes a few years ago working with this winery and they set up their SCQR for this winery which was re recently purchased by the Morellis and they ran into an issue uh, that their wine club memberships were stagnant and so the question was how do we increase sales and so they put a recommendation and built really their their consulting work based and their recommendations that came out of their consulting were based on increasing brand awareness so when we think about SCQR, what you want to do is set up almost a pyramid in terms of that set up with the recommendation and then from your recommendation having three pillars, and three support points. So when you hear me talk about buckets, it's a good way of being able to break up the presentation into chunks. So as you noticed, even in this presentation, how I had three or uh, three or four different chunks that I want and I lay it out. So you have that. But the three point is a very good way because people tend to memorize, have attention, they pay attention to stuff in points of three. So let's talk about threes, let's segue over to pyramid and pyramid structure because that will help illustrate this a little further. So how do you organize your presentations? Okay, so according to uh, the folks over at um, McKinsey, telling good stories is the best way using the pyramid principle. So groups, logic, and MISI, and we'll get into MISI in a second. So if you look at this list, this is a uh, grocery list, right? So how do you group things logically? Okay, so if you look at it, um, there's probably some dairy. There's probably uh, some vegetables or fruits. There's some dry stuff or um, I'll just say, you know, bread type of thing. So you can start putting this. This is how you can memorize your laundry list. So what do we have? Fruits, vegetables, dairy, and dry goods that are there. And this way you can organize it. So you can do that within your presentation in terms of what we call buckets. So what is MISI? MISI is a way of organizing your thought processes. We call it mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So when we say mutually exclusive, do any of the points overlap? And collectively exhaustive is are all the possibilities covered so let's just, just look at a few examples okay so ABC experiencing losses so how do we turn the losses into profit that's a core question revenue or cost we could do that you could break it out for volume price for revenue or fixed cost or variable cost in terms of your cost structure and then you can lay out certain questions to address these issues that are there, which really in many ways you can use this in your consulting assignments when you're framing them and, and really focusing things with your clients. Here's another one, a marketing example. Uses in class. How do we increase sales? It's a common question. Okay, we can reduce the unit cost, okay, to improve volume. We can improve the marketing strategy in terms of how we approach. Okay, so it could be across the four P's and changing the sales strategy in terms of structure, skill base, and promotion strategy. So you can really take these down um, the tree limbs so that uh, you really think through those elements. But in many ways, as you see the top three, those become the basis for basically your um, pyramid structure. So what about flow? Okay, so order problem solving analysis should be different from presentation. Most folks are trained in the scientific uh, principle of uh, being able to run experiments. And if you follow it, and I'm trained as a scientist, you go from, you know, here's the introduction, the problem, here's the methods, here's the results, and all that way at the end, guess what? 
and hypothesis data, conclusions and recommendations. I see this so many times in presentations. We, we, we save the best for last. But in the business world, it's the opposite. The presentation process and the individuals who are most effective in doing this in their presentations and their general communication in business are more effective. <laughs> okay? SCQR, problem statement. Here's your recommendations. Data support and then conclusions, okay, that, that are there. So that gives you a sort of a sense of we flipped, really, in many ways, the flow that's there. So look at this flow that we have, okay? I call it setup, backup, wrap up. So in threes that we have, right? So SCQR, and we have three strategies. So we set that pyramid up, okay? Now we can go to strategy backup number one talk about issues that are there, recommendation number one, which are the three strategies, that's the first, the second, and then the third. And then in your wrap-up, you think about your steps forward, your rich mitigation, and then your final take-home point. This slide I would print out, I'd memorize. This is the structure that I will be looking at every single presentation, and I will be grading. It will be a basis of also when I do the final presentation, looking you know, have you set this up properly? Have you made your bottom line point there? And then have you built that logical flow in terms of your recommendations? And then steps forward, risk mitigation, and your final take home really is a nice way to end it up. Um, I'm going to quote Bill Barton, the CEO of uh, California Closets. And he said many times, it's a students, he could tell who my students were because they use this formula. They use it. It's, it's, it's a very effective formula. It's a formula that uh, McKinsey uses and uh, students from many, many of the um, of, of really, really good MBA programs. It's part of the content that is there to enhance the ability. So this is what we have here as a top MBA program is these type of strategies so that you can be more effective in making your points and telling your story. So, headlines and stories we're going to segue into. And this is our last section here. So, why are headlines important? Well, remember, you got to punch home your points. And if you got a lot of data on a slide, you can get very confused. So, keep in mind, one point per slide. Actually, there's some work, and Michael Alley, I think I assigned this as a reading, he says that uh, he did some research, and what he found was that headlines lead to greater retention of your message. So, do you just put a singular thing? And I see this with a lot of research. Here's the introduction, here's the methods, and here's the results. But you see iron here, and then you see a statement that really pulls that data. Guess what the difference in recall was? The difference in recall was, believe it or not, 63% over 46%. So a significant increase in that recall of the bottom line. So sentences that are heavy led to higher test scores. And this is what done in terms of Ali and some of his research that he did in classes. And he found that those that had higher, um, had, had been exposed to those type of slides ended up translating to higher test scores. So why is a story important? So you'll hear also in the rubric, you'll see, did you use headlines, but story. And the story is important for a few reasons. One, the audience remain, retains a limited base of information that you put forth. So what do we remember more? We remember that we remember stories are something, and actually 60 to 30 percent of people remember stories, and we're just wired that way, whereas only 5 percent remember statistics. So that's very key. So when you're all familiar with Talk Like Ted by Carmine Gallo, but basically the road to a great presentation is really pulling these pieces together in terms of emotional, novel, and memorable. And a story allows you to do that. So how do you link it together? So here is what we call a classic story arc. In many ways, SCQR sort of sets up the, 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 the exposition and conflict and tension in a story that is there, which is around the problem. The climax gets into your recommendations and your data to support your recommendations. 
And then as attention falls, really is that last part that we talked about, which is the wrap up, which is, you know, next steps in mitigation in your take home. So many, many movies follow a arc like this. And this is actually from a book called The Boys in the Boat, where realistically it was a story about how this group of nine Americans were able to um, achieve greatness in the Olympic um sculling uh, uh, event and won gold over um, the host country was Germany and I think the Italians as you can see in that slide or in that um, picture up in the upper right hand corner and so here's a few examples of storylines just to sort of think about man in the hole okay where the main character gets in trouble and then gets out of it and ends up in a better off for an experience another one is boy meets girl where the main character comes across something wonderful, gets it, loses it, and then gets it back forever. So, you know, just start thinking about some storylines and make it interesting because this is how people will remember your point. They won't, may, they won't remember the, the minute details, but what they will remember is the story and the major theme that you're trying to get across. So anyway, this is the first of a few steps. I try to keep it under 16 minutes. That's why I broke it up into uh, a few parts to digest. And uh, let's uh, take a break, digest, and we will uh, invite you to check out part two for slide tips. So hopefully we've given you some good strategy and we can get into some uh, more of the tactical elements of presentations. Thanks and have a great day. Have a great day.